Hi, my name is Jason Varsby. I'm a self-employed computer consultant based in Paynton in Torbay in the UK. And today I'm going to have a look at this, which is a um, HP JetDirect EX print server. Um, it's quite an old device, but it's quite a bulletproof device, and uh, it uh, goes in quite well with the LaserJet 4L. Um, that uh, you can see uh, I've got set up here with it. Um, <coughs> they're both sort of 15 or 20 years old probably now, but um, they do work still very well and very well together. The problem with these devices, the Jet, uh, Jet Direct uh, print server, um, this one particularly, is that it talks boot P. Um, it needs a boot P uh, to set up its IP address. Um, and not DHCP, which is what most modern systems use, and therefore what most modern routers um, use to dole out IP addresses. This thing can't talk DHCP, so it has to make its request for an IP address via boot P. Uh, so basically, as you can see, I've got this set up um, with a, a connection to the network. Um, the power lead is connected up, and the link parallel cable into this HP LaserJet 4L and you can see we've got a status light on solidly and an activity light in the, in the middle. Uh, one word about that, um, I found with one particular hub that I was using uh, that I couldn't actually get a proper network connection uh, and it turned out that that particular hub wasn't giving link beat which I guess is probably some sort of early heartbeat um, uh, sort of uh, set up on uh, UTP um, and I tried a different hub and that worked fine so uh, that's just um, something that you know that might be useful. In order to actually set up or look at the initial setup of the uh, Jet Direct, there's a test button on the front here which I'm going to press and you should see fairly quickly that you actually get a light uh, flashing on the printer that you've got attached uh, that will give us a printout of the basic settings of the uh, Jet Direct as it starts out um, and it's, you can see that's coming out now. Okay this is the uh, printout that the, um, the printer has just provided uh, and you can see there that uh, there is no IP address set. The IP address is 0 .0 .0 .0, um and the subnet mask is not specified and the default gateway is not specified that's basically because the um, the print server is in its sort of uh, clean state with, with nothing set up on it. Um, so the next stage is for us to set up a boot P server on the network that will uh, respond to the requests that the print server itself um, is sending out. Okay, we're now going to look at the uh, PC on which the boot P server is going to run. Uh, the first thing you need to do is set up an NPI file uh, which I'm just going to show you here. I put mine in the root uh, directory and call it json.npi uh, and it needs to have the uh, lines in as you can see there uh, name. Uh, I've just called mine laserjet 4L because that's what the printer is. Um, I think location and contact are fairly arbitrary. Uh, the idle timeout I've set to 1800 and the banner uh, 0 and as you can see there as I say it needs to have an NPI extension and just make a note of where you put that because you'll need it in a minute. Okay this is just to show you in a command prompt my IP numbering structure. Um, the host that we're on at the moment is 192.168.0.4 and the IP address that I'm going to give the print server is ending in 199 which of course I'm pinging now this is just to show you that there's no response because the boot P server hasn't done its bit yet uh, so 199 isn't yet on the network okay now we're going to look at the uh, Cabletron boot P TFTP server which is what I've chosen to use I find it works very well there are two tabs that we're going to look at. One is the view log, which we're looking at now. This is where you'll see the requests come in from the print server or any other device, obviously, that's boot P on your network. Uh, but 
in our case from the print server um, and this is the boot p server setup screen where you can click on new and within that you enter the MAC address of the print server itself and that can be found on one of the printed out sheets that we saw earlier on when I pressed the test button. The IP address of the uh, print server that you want to give it, so that's what you want the, the print server to be on your network, and the NPI file that we just created a couple of minutes ago. Um, and that will produce that entry in your list with the MAC address, the IP address, and the uh, the link uh, to the NPI file. Finally you need to, as I've shown there, um, put a blob in the radio button for broadcast reply to boot P requests and take it out of the direct reply one. Seems to work if you do that and not if you don't. And we're now going to go back to the view log. This is to actually show the request coming in from the printer or the, rather the, the print server. Um, it seems to send one out about every one and a half to two minutes um, so one should come in um, any time now and we'll see its MAC address, there it is, just come in and the MAC address 080009 etc um, the request has come in and then the line below uh, the same um, request has been processed i.e. the boot P server has sent the IP address and the data in the config file to the print server and this is where we can prove it. This is why I wanted to show you a before and after if you like. If we now try pinging 192.168.0.199 we get a reply because it's now up and running and on the network. Okay so I've just um, pressed the test button again on the um, print server as I did before. Um, since we've actually um, set up the boot P server to accept the boot P request from this device, uh, it has now been assigned the IP address 192.168.0.199. So hopefully, all being well, the sheet that comes out on here, this is the first sheet you get to. Um, the second one is the one that has the IP address on it. And hopefully we should see that that reads 192.168.0.199 and if it does that is job done as far as the print server is concerned. Well I hope you can see there that um, it does indeed now say um, an IP address of 192.168.0.199 uh, config by boot P um, and uh, that's basically now set up to allow us to talk to the printer.